update. So it turns out that it's too early to go to the grocery store. I tried to open the door and there was a guy actually, probably the owner, that let me know by opening it that they don't open for two more weeks. So any early season paddlers, just be aware of that. However, wonderful amenity. Right behind me there is flush toilets with a bathroom that's very clean, has a trash in there. And on the outside, right over there, there's plugs that work. So I topped off my big battery bank while I went unsuccessfully bought a cold drink or something. Not important. Breeze is picking up ever so slightly, far from windy. But there's a teeny, teeny little bit of ripples as a headwind now. Um, far, far from a problem. This lake is so long and skinny that there's a thousand little wind blocks on one side of the, the lake or another. So saved a little bit of money today. Made a phone call, left a voice mail to my wife. Um, tried to reach out a little bit um, to arrange a shuttle for the closed Canada section, so working on that. So, time to hit the water. This is a particularly nice looking spot. So this is, according to the map, Kelly's Point that shelter over there and uh, the, the view here is lovely the water is super calm that's off towards the other end of the far end of Long Lake according to the map that should be Buck Mountain the last few little bits of houses that I've that I can see in the distance are over there on the far shore and that's the way I came from here we are at the very end of Long Lake into these really kind of neat swampy, boggy things that are full of, up below the normal water line, I'd say. The plants are, the water's high, is what I'm trying to say. But this should be, because it's like a little maze back here, should be the entrance to the Racket River. Last couple little dwellings over there. And let's back the way that we can. So I'm really enjoying the Rocket River. There's a very strong current going on with it. All these neat little ripples everywhere. Um, I'm not even paddling right now, and I'm I'm going, I would guess, at least three miles per hour. Actually, I'm headed right towards that shore, so I should probably start steering. But there's a really strong current, and it's a very pleasant paddle. I'd say we made it to the Racket Falls Portage. So there's a nice informative sign here that you can't really miss and I believe them because I can hear and see rapids right there and I can also see a second sign with a broken boat behind it and I feel like a broken boat is the universal sign for don't paddle ahead so that's the uphill to that portage there so I'm gonna land on shore and start gearing up for this particularly challenging one and a quarter mile non wheelable portage so I'm all loaded up for my not easily wheeled portage of a mile and a quarter. I had a 0.6 mile not wheelable portage yesterday and my strategy that I had for the trip really didn't work out well, which was to have the paddle cart strapped on the back of this thing. It made the back so heavy that it was really digging into my shoulders. And I had too much attached to the boat, I still had the thwart bag and stuff in the seat on it. And it made it bouncing really difficult. So. We'll give this a whirl. My plan was to get as much of the weight as I could inside the dry bag. Really lightweight stuff hanging off the back. That's just the map and my PFD and the seat. I put the paddles in like normal, but I took everything else out. And I did put the paddle cart as centered as I could get it. And then I also kind of played around by picking up the boat to see where to put that, that actual uh, portage yoke. So that's as close to balance as I could find with the paddle cart and those paddles on it. And what I'm hoping is that this will make it easier to carry this over my head. And if that's the case too, if this works, if I get to a section where it can be wheeled, then I can always put the canoe down on the wheels and tow it for a bit. And there's less weight in the canoe so I can pick it up over little rocks and, and things. The beginning was extremely difficult. It's upstairs, up a hill, and no matter how you split up my gear and carry what wear, it's still just over 100 pounds, and that's just hard no matter how you do it. So thankfully, after that, it, it did get to the point where I could put the boat down and wheel it probably three quarters of the way, just picking it up over 
runoff drainage trenches and, and boulders and logs here and there. So I will definitely be doing it this way forward. Um, so this way behind me here, that's the finish of the trail. You can see it's actually pretty nice at the bottom. We also have a problem there. And then to switch it around back down to the river. And this tree tells you clearly that you're not allowed to camp in the river right there. Just kidding, water's high. And then up through the trees there, you can certainly hear and see lots and lots of water coming down. But that's the very exit of the water coming out. A lot of current going on. Should make the next little bit wonderfully fast. That's the takeout right there, so I can go that far upstream. Alright, good morning from the Racket River. All loaded up. And it's just spitting out a little bit. So I've got my rain jacket on just in case it gets any worse and keep my other layers dry. Slept pretty good last night, a little bit of showers, very light. I barely even see anything in the water. So it's time to head downstream and try to look out for where the stream splits and paddle upstream for a little bit. Um, the book talks about it being tricky to find in high water, or at least to follow in high water, so we'll see how that goes. All right, here's our turn. So this is Stony Creek, even though it's very flooded and is much more like a pond, but the trail continues pretty much straight north to Stony Creek Ponds. So with the high water the way that it was, it felt kind of like cheating because there's, there's no leaves on the trees yet, so I could see very far up. And there's certainly a very obvious, very bendy, windy, snaky pattern that, that you could definitely follow in there. But I was able to cut a lot of corners um, just because the water's so high, I could paddle in between and kind of uh, just cut the corners like that. Made it to the northern of the two Stony Creek ponds. And I just had to play limbo underneath that bridge. So I went all the way under the very left part and it was pretty close. I had to get down on my knees in the bottom of the canoe and kind of curl up in a ball. And then I probably had, I don't know, six inches of clearance over the top of my head. Um, so that was challenging. I wasn't sure if I was gonna have to carry over it or not, but successful limbo. So here we are. This is the northern of the two. Um, beautiful remote. The end of it, I believe, is over there, and then there's a portage that goes up that little bit of elevation you can see to a gravel road. And from the gravel road, it's a wheelable portage over to the upper Saranac Lake. Here we are. This is Upper Saranac Lake beautiful conditions at least down in this corner. I'm not in this one for very long. Um, I think this is another good reminder that I just have to realize that I can't really predict what's going to be coming up because there was a little bit of a headwind on Stony Creek Pond so I assume that there'd be a headwind here since this is a bigger body of water and at least where I'm standing at the moment it's way calmer than that tiny little pond was so I just have to probably try to do a little less prediction when it comes to that wind, who knows what it's doing, but the portage to get here was half on gravel road, which was fine, and then half on pretty uphill, bumpy, gnarly stuff that the wheels really had to kind of do their work, but it went okay. So now I enter this shortly, do another gravel road portage to the middle of Saranac Lake, which um, is beautiful. And then I'm through that the whole way, and then I get down into the stingy little system that takes me over through some locks down to the lower Saranac Lake. And then from there, it's a pretty big windy lake that goes into the Saranac River, and that's where I end up at my campsite tonight. So this is absolutely gorgeous. That's where I just came out of to enter the main body of the middle Saranac Lake. <laughs> And this is just pristine. So far it wins. Most beautiful view of the trip, in my opinion. The water is pretty darn calm looking. Got some mountains off in the distance. It's 
beautiful. I don't see a single other person out here. Not that I've seen a lot of people this trip, but these lakes are very popular. So it should be a nice, relaxing, gorgeous paddle down to that end over there. So there's a couple loons off in the distance there swimming around, enjoying the lake as much as I am. I'm pretty much smacked up in the middle now, so I just wanted to pan around again just to show you how beautiful it is here. Just got to the eastern shore, or exit I should say, of Middle Saranac Lake. I did bump into one motorboat out there. Um, other than that, it was pretty pristine right until the end when there was a fighter jet doing some kind of flyby training thing that was super loud. But it was still a surreal, stunning lake. It's gonna be tough to beat that one. But this is kind of what the canal looks like. So you can see all those buoy things. All right, here we are, the upper locks. So, the way that works is you pull into here. This is already set for this higher water level. So I just paddled right on in, got out of my boat. And then you have these big gate things that are also bridges, which is a little scary. So right now there's so much water that it's actually not that big of a difference, but we're going to use it anyway. So I grabbed this big heavy thing here. It's slow and steady. Okay, I opened it up and up at the top again, so I left it exactly how I found it, so that way when those boaters come back, they should have the easy way through. So, this is the downstream side. More of those buoys to go through. But down this a little bit more, and then it opens up into Lower Saranac Lake. All right, currently in the very top part of the Saranac River. And this is what we'll be calling home for tonight. It's pretty early. It's only about 3.40. I feel like I could definitely go farther today. However, I have a resupply in town tomorrow. And even if I paddled kind of quick, I'm not guaranteed that I get there before the post office closes, which would be a bummer. So I will hang out here tonight, enjoy myself, and then get into town early, get my resupply, and um, maybe grab some fresh food there since it's a bigger town and their grocery store probably isn't closed for the next two weeks. So I just woke up. It's a drizzly morning. It did rain for real last night and today has a chance. Uh, at least my three-day-old forecast has a chance of rain all day, but I should be able to get an update on that today. However, I came down to get my food bag, which is in that legitimate bear hang right there. And the first thing I noticed is when I got down to my canoe that that, that fort bag that was definitely neatly tucked underneath the canoe was dragged out a few feet and I've, I've put the contents back in when I checked everything for damage but pretty much everything that was in that main compartment was out loosely scattered within about a foot of it so there isn't any food in there it's all fishing tackle fishing pole a little saw my sunglasses and a repackable pack however I do tend to keep my day's food in there during the day so I can easily reach it so it probably did smell like food so maybe in hindsight that needs to get hung up but what was interesting about it is that the zipper was completely opened just how it or very close to how it is now I did that but it was it was like that so there was no damage to the bag so I looked around for tracks I'm not gonna pretend like I'm a master tracker I didn't find anything that gave it away but the, the sand here is pretty soft and squishy I'd imagine anything really big probably would have left tracks I could find so I'm going to 
make an estimated guess that it was probably a raccoon because they're smart enough to be able to, to work a zipper without ripping open the bag. And it had to be something with some decent size to be able to, to manipulate those zippers. Um, so that's my guess. And then the other thing I do on purpose is that little um, Velcro pocket right there is my trash pocket throughout the day. All of my trash snacks go into that, but I leave that open at night in case a mouse or something wants to go in and check it out so that way he can find out there's no food in there and doesn't bother chewing through it to go find out there's no food in there because that's happened to me with uh, trash and snack pockets on backpacking backpacks before so I got, I got to the habit of just leaving them open at night to let critters go realize it smells good doesn't taste good so let's not destroy it so uh, interesting experience no damage um, that's great so now I'm gonna go get my food bag for real and, and go have some breakfast so I'm eating my breakfast and I was trying to think you know, what, what probably took that bag out of there and was trying to find some, some food in it. And I was going through my head and I was like, well, probably a raccoon smart enough and big enough to drag it out of there. And maybe a porcupine, that's not super likely. A bear probably would have left prints or just ripped the thing right open, not even caring that it has zippers. And I'm thinking, well, a person it certainly could be, like, it, it's not impossible, but if they were interested in taking something from me, there was a few hundred dollars worth of fishing stuff and some nice sunglasses in there that nothing was touched, so it's not super likely as a person. And I was like, meh, that's probably some, probably one of those things. And now, here I am sitting in this shelter, as you can no see behind me, eating my breakfast, and mostly packed up. And in one of these trees right up here, it's not a puzzle, there we go one of these trees right here an enormous black bird it would i don't know if there's ravens in this area but it, it was probably a huge crow or maybe a raven i don't know that had been watching me eat and it got bored or something and it just started flying away and i thought about it's it like actually you know what both of those are in the J family which are considered in the top 10 most intelligent of animal species they would be smart enough i bet to potentially drag something out and work the zippers too. So I guess I'll throw them into the mix, especially since I saw one. I'm not saying it for sure was, but it could be. Okay, so here I am at the lower docks. And this one looks a little bit more um, advanced. It's got wheels and stuff. So it's, I don't really think that it's necessary for me to figure out how to work this one. It's a very short port of that little dock down there. I'm just going to carry stuff. Um, there is actually a signed canoe carry over at that little dock over there, but it sucks. It goes up that really steep hill and it goes a lot further than you think it would. So since there's nobody else here and I don't think I'm going to hurt anybody, I'm just going to carry my stuff over this little dock right here. Um, and save myself that bushwhack. All right, A plus for that treehouse. That, that, that's a really cool one. It even has the stairs on that rock. Very neat. So, Oceda Lake, very pretty, foggy. I'm not in this for very long. I'm basically searching in that direction for the Saranac River to continue into Saranac Lake Town. So we're just a little past the treehouse island, which is right over there. And there's this beautiful little picnic table island boardwalk thing that these people have. One thing that's unique so far about this lake is that all the private property signs, instead of being your stereotypical private no trespassing or trespassers will be prosecuted or any of that stuff, all of the signs include the word sorry. So it's like, sorry, private property. Like that one where there's a sorry private, which is just uh, friendly and cute. But there's a really elaborate board rock, boardwalk on the other side of that rock that goes all the way around. And there's some too that's over on the shore over there and a path that goes up to that beautiful lawn with that house over there with the birch trees. So talk about a neat thing. If they own all that property that goes out to that point, good for them, I'm jealous. So it's safe to say that we made it to Saranac Lake, the town. Much more commotion going on than anywhere else so far. Lots of cars and bigger buildings than all the huge mansions on the lakes even. So 
towards that brick building straight ahead. Somewhere there'll be a portage through the police station parking lot and then back over to the river on the other side of the dam. So as crazy as this is, now that I'm at the most populated part of the trail I've seen so far, I've seen my first significant wildlife. I thought they were fake, but there are three deer, hopefully they don't get hit right now, that are just hanging out in front of that white house eating grass. I thought they were fake until I saw them start eating. So, um, good luck deer. I really hope the best for them. I hope they don't get hit. And there's even a guy right there doing stuff behind that truck. So, I would say that they're pretty tame.